We're here with Derry Green, who is the founder and owner of The Secret Garden Glamping. So Derry, just tell us a little bit about how you started it. Um, so yeah, this all started in so 2020, in the yeah. first lockdown. Um, before this, I had a transport business um, and I used to come back into to Spain. Ah. So I'd be in Spain for a week and here for a week and I'd go back into. Um, so I came back on it was about the 10th of March, yeah. fully expecting to go back a week later yeah. and got stuck here in the, in the right, first course, lockdown. Yeah. So I had nothing to do. Trying to find things, the kids were off, and it was like, right, what can we get up to? So, and I love building stuff, I can't sit still, and it yeah. was great weather, as everybody knew. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was like a summer, weren't it? Um, so, it's just started building the first one. The plan was for me and the kids to camp out, that's what it started as. Yeah. So, the first night was a tent. Tent right. on the grass, that was it. Yeah. It was a bit damp in the morning, right, we need to do something else. So, I built a deck the second day, and we right. put the tent on the deck. <laughs> okay. And then it just kept it kept evolving from there, so it got more and more. And, and as with everything that I do, it gets out of hand. So I, I was like, right, I can do this, I can do that. And I just kept building. Right. And um, by the end of the first lockdown, I had the, the first pub, the hideout. And it was, again, it was always just for me and the kids to do. Yeah. But um, Lad Bible, so it was like, a, I put it on my Facebook when yeah. I had about, I think I had about 400 followers at the time, yeah. something like that. And a friend of a friend of a friend seen it and they worked at Unilad. Oh. So they did a story on what a dad had done in lockdown. That yes, was the original, I remember seeing it. Yeah, that was the yeah. original story. And that blew up. So they put it on the first day, Lad Bible did it the second day, and from there it just escalated. Wow. Um, and people started messaging me saying, can we come and stay? Yeah. And I was like, well, I've got no other business to do. Why not? Yeah. Let's see. So I put it on Airbnb. And within three days, it was booked for two years. That is amazing. Yeah. The so power it, of social media. It was isn't crazy. It? That's what it was, yeah. and, it, and it all went from there. And then from that initial one, I could see there was a massive opportunity yeah. um, because you know people obviously wanted to do that sort of thing. The way I'd done it at the time, again, it was for me and the kids, but having its own facilities, secluded, all fenced in, not near anybody else, all yeah. those sorts of things that people were specifically looking for yeah. within COVID just all played in my favour. Yeah. So then I just carried on that model as we went through and obviously through COVID and just kept expanding and it all went from there. And how many have you got now? So now we're at eight. eight? Uh, so wow. we're in the treehouse now. This is this yeah. again was supposed to be the last one of uh, when I did the extra planning, but now we're gonna go and do five more, so it'll be 13 in total. Yeah. That's incredible. So yeah. tell me about the planning process, because most people when they're starting a glamping site, yeah. they want to know how you get, that is the first question we get asked is, how do I get planning permission? Yeah. And we just, we did it ourselves, we knew what we were going for, we um, just, we didn't get an agent in, we just did it, and we were so lucky we got it within eight, eight weeks. Yeah. So we felt we had a really easy breeze with the planning. How was it for you? So to be fair, from, the process it, it went through pretty good to be fair That's good. um and i know a lot of people have a lot of trouble oh, with planning. Years and years. yeah it's ridiculous yeah. and it gets tied up and, and that, that sort of stuff now to be fair what i did is i took on a planning consultant um so claire my planning consultant thank you claire if you're watching this <laughs> she's amazing um and and she taught me through everything everything we needed to do we did a pre-planning application so we went to him rather than springing it on the, yeah. the planners went to him said this is what we want to do invited them down, got them to look around and, and kind of get on board with what I wanted to do here. Yeah. Um, and then it made the process much easier. Yeah. Rather than just saying, we want this from you, we wanted to try and make sure that they knew why yeah. I was doing it. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't just to cut a load of trees down and make a load of money. It was it, it was for a specific reason, what we was doing and how yeah. we was going to do it and everything else. So once they got on board with that pre-planning app, yeah. the full planning was a doddle. The council have seen what we've done, you know, how many staff we've taken on now, the, the impact we're having on the, the local economy and all that sort of stuff. They're fully on board with it now and, and really keen for us to, yeah. to expand more. Yeah, so how many staff do you employ? 15 now in total we've got 15. here. 15, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. So it's gone from just me um, and actually my mum at first, it was just my mum doing the washing and me oh, doing but, the building. Yeah. Um, and then we took on a friend of mine, their, their wife, um, and, and then from the three of us it's grown and grown then. Yeah, because that's kind of where we're at. We're at the point where I do everything, I've got a couple of kind of casual mm. staff, but it's that going from small scale into the big scale where you're employing people you've got your massive laundry room yeah. that's how where did you get to the point where i now have to employ people so to be fair it was right back at the start the the cleaning side of things you know the changeovers the day-to-day -day stuff i could see it straight away because i did it for the first sort of three four weeks i think it was and it took up all my time yeah. and oh, there was yeah. no way of doing anything else within the business no. and at that point because we only had the one but because we were fully booked for two years i had thousands of messages to deal with on a daily basis you know people at the time it was airbnb but contacting us through social media and different companies wanting to do things so it was all that side yeah. and all i was doing 
was changing beds and cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> so straight away I realised, if I just do this, I can't get any further with it because you, no. you're stuck in the business, yeah. you can't do it. And the further I've stepped away, each time we took somebody on to do a specific role, whether it be Chelsea who's doing my social media now, Paul who does all the grounds work, you know, each time I've stepped away, mm. we've, I've managed to come up with an increase in the business because yeah. I've been able to do things that I should be focusing on. Yeah. Um, so it, it is hard, so it's hard to let go of any it is, of it. Yeah. But it's it's one massive thing that, that, that we've done now that I've got everybody here. It does mean that I can free up and spend. And the more time I spend doing other things, like you know, social media or marketing, whatever it is, it's exponential. We grow yeah. even more, so then I can take on more people so we can grow even more. Yeah. It works out like that. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the fact that you are the most booked, <laughs> the most viewed glamping site in the UK. Yeah. Like, d- how how has that happened? Like, do you sometimes step away and think like this is incredible what I've achieved? Oh it, yeah. Now at this point, it, it's amazing how far it goes. It's, it's funny actually. Yesterday I got a, a booking in through yesterday for I think it's mid twenty twenty four, and I looked at the address and it was a New York City address. Really? And I thought, well, what's going on here? So I messaged them. And I said, just you know, just to confirm the address, right? Yeah, she'd seen it on TikTok, and right. she's booked, and she's she needs to know where to fly in. She's flying into Manchester. We're going to get a taxi arranged, and she's come in for two days just to stay here. She's flying from, from New, New York, York to come and stay here and insane. flying back because she'd seen it on TikTok. Social media is the biggest tool in anybody's marketing arsenal. I mean, although you can pay for a lot of it, organic reach, especially something like TikTok, is free, and it it just gets you out there, yeah. and it's. It's been amazing, you know, growing each time and learning from that. It, that's one of my favourite things, and it's been the hardest thing to yeah. kind of step away from a little bit, because it's like le- every time you do something, you learn a bit more and you work out what all these different things do. And as things go forward now, you know, people like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok—they're giving you the tools to do it for free. I know they we're really lucky at this this level, like day and age, that we've got all this. Like, if yeah. you were having running a campsite twenty years ago, no. you'd be putting like adverts and papers and stuff yeah. would be impossible whereas you can suddenly get to this incredible worldwide audience yeah. through TikTok but a lot of glamping sites are worried about using TikTok yeah. people are our age yeah. <laughs> we feel a bit old for TikTok but you're like no go for it are you yeah 100% if I was on one platform it would be TikTok oh, really? although it's not our okay. biggest following you know Facebook is our biggest following by a you know, yeah. country mile TikTok has now become the second biggest platform. Wow, it's it's okay. outstripped our Instagram, not only for our followers and views, yeah. but also for our booking ratio. So we can see where everything's yeah. coming from, all our yeah. bookings. Our second biggest driver is, is TikTok. That's crazy. It, so TikTok is a free platform. It got the, the name because everybody assumed it was the children who were, who were going yeah. on it to make it. But it's not that they're, they're pushing everything forward. Everybody's on TikTok now. Yeah. And it's not always, this is what I say with, with TikTok, it's not always the, the people who will be your target audience. No. But it's who they show it to. The yeah. amount of times my 10-year-old daughter comes to me and says, Dad, look at this. Oh. And I'll be like, oh, that's amazing, actually. Yeah. Where's this from? <laughs> and then I'll start searching it because she's shown it me. Right, And okay. that happens all the time. We had, Get your um, kids to help you, that's Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. The amount of celebrities that we've had come and stay because their kids have shown them it on TikTok and then they've seen it and thought, oh, that's really good. And yeah. It, it, it happened. You never know who that's going to reach. And no. the, the thing with TikTok as a platform, you can do no wrong. No. So if you do a terrible video that's rubbish and, and, and nobody wants to see it, nobody will see it. Yeah. A couple of hundred people will see it. If you do something that's phenomenal and really captures you know somebody's attention, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people see it in a day. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And so where's where you kind of go to from here? So you've got this amazing glamping site, you've got planning for more. Yeah. Is is 13 going to be your maximum? Like, How much land have you got here? Could you go bigger? Yeah, so we've got four and a half acres here. Um, we're only using about a quarter of it so far for the site. Um, okay. So we could go, I could go a lot bigger, we could have 20 or 30 or 40 yeah. here, but I'd never do that. I, when we was chatting earlier, the thing with, as you as you grow exponentially on one site, it becomes very difficult with infrastructure, you know, car parking, water, waste, power, all these things are a problem when you get to a, to a larger scale. So I think the solution is multiple smaller sites, which are far easier to, from an infrastructure point of view. You know, the units are, you know, we, we do them all the time, that's, you know, I've got that kind of down yeah. to a T now. But the infrastructure as you scale is harder. So somewhere like Centre Parks, Jesus, God forbid, how they would get through, even down to the planning side of stuff. Yeah. As you get to that stage, all these things have to be laid out. When you're doing something on a smaller scale, it's a lot, lot easier. So if we can do multiple smaller sites, then that's 
the way we're going to be. Well, I couldn't believe that you're off grid, as in yeah. you have no mains power here. No. Yet you've got all this lighting, you've got three TVs in here, you've yeah. got what I would imagine was a lot of electric. Mm. How have you overcome the the off grid side of it? Because I don't see solar panels anywhere. Like, no. how does it? How does that work? So that was. It's all come from necessity. So originally, when I set up the first uh, pod, I had six thousand pounds. That's what I built the first one with. That was the total amount of money I had to right, my name well, at yeah, the time because yeah. I had no job. The business had gone. That was it. And I wanted a, a power cable in, and Electricity Northwest con quoted me one hundred and twenty thousand pounds to so build a new insane. substation. Absolutely yeah, absolutely insane. It's, it's impossible. Just, yeah, couldn't. It, 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 totally unfeasible even now when I've gone back to them and we've got grants in place and all these sort of things they still want £60,000 <laughs> and even now at the point we're at it's still not not a thing that's no. doable to, to recoup because the costs are going up all the time yeah. so we do everything with it so now it was originally on a generator right. so we had a 50 kVA generator that runs the site and more whenever right. it luckily I always over engineer everything so when yeah. I started I had the 50 kVA generator which will run a small housing estate running a yurt. That was it. That was what it was <laughs> running. Like Brian, yeah. yeah. But then I knew in the future I'd want to do this. New future this. proof, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and I did with everything and now where we're at we've just had installed this new um, renewable battery storage. Yeah, that's so that, amazing. Yeah, so the generator comes on for three hours, tops up the batteries, that then distributes to the site then all through the day and the night. Um, so it's a brilliant system. We can tie it. So for next year, we're going to be tying in solar and wind into that. But then we've still got the, the backup generator yeah. there to, to boost it whenever yeah, you'll we need get it. The power, yeah, because yeah. it, it's all about storage. That's where the, that's where the downfall with any renewable comes. It's how much can you store yeah. when it's blazing sunshine in the middle of summer compared to when it's you know pitch mm. black and rainy in winter. And it's, it's it's getting that balance. So this is the perfect solution for it. Yeah. Although it's expensive infrastructure, it's been really good from. Um, from a business point of view, because there's lots of incentives around at the minute, sustainability is a massive thing, you yeah. know, not only from a, a business point of view, but from a customer point of view. So anything we can do around that is um, is always going to help us. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for having <laughs> us. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. Obviously, most of our following of people are people who want to start a glamping site, yeah. and they are going to be blown away by the fact that you can do this on a few acres of land, yeah. off grid, because that's another question we get asked is, how much land do you need? Mm. You don't need that much land. How do you do it when you can't get mains power? You just need basically water and then you can you yeah. can do the rest on renewables and, and all sorts oh, yeah. of different ways. There's always a way around it and you know we're always here, even Derry's always said haven't you, that you're yeah. always happy to for people to get in touch and if you're if you're stuck on something, there's there's people who will always answer questions so you can always get in touch with us or get in touch with Derry and we'll always, we'll always try and help if we can. Yeah, it's one thing about this community, it's from previous businesses that I've done, it's always been everybody keeps the cars close to the yeah. chest, nobody wants to help anybody, nobody wants to tell you how to do something. Where with this, you only have to go online and somebody will give you a better solution yeah. than you can come up with and that's what it is. With a lot of stuff it's always trial and error and trying to figure out the new thing, the new way to do it. And if we can come up with better ideas between us all, then yeah. why, not, why not share them? Well, we've always said, like, why would we keep all this information? That we've we've made mistakes, we've learned yeah. from it. If if we can help somebody not make that mistake, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, exactly. and that yeah, the glamping community is an amazing one, and we've got this lovely um, Facebook group where yeah. we chat and yeah. and so yeah, we feel really lucky. Thank you so much for having us. It is it well, the kids are having an amazing time. <laughs> they enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. No worries. You're welcome. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Uh, we can always post. Um, message Derry and I'm sure he'll answer any questions so please do leave some comments for us and um, thank you ever so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video